Meta Platforms Stock. Take a symbol M-E-T-A. This company, it's in trouble. And it just gets worse and worse day over day. More and more pain for the stock. Let me show you today. Down an additional 0.76%. In fact, over the past five days, we have hit a new low. Down 6.9% over the past five days alone. One month returns. Down 20.58% and six month returns. Well, that tells the full story. Down 53.51%. And year to date, year to date even worse. Down 53.96%. One year returns in totality of negative 45.24%. A new 52 week low for the company. We thought the pain was over. We thought after this swift rebound down here, we thought maybe, maybe we're getting a bit of stability. Maybe we're getting the justice that this company deserves. And yet, the pain continues. The fear continues to proliferate around this business. The, the pain continues to be pushed all around this company. So, what am I thinking? Oh, I think it's time to give up. I think it's time to bail on Meta to leave the company and say, listen, it's been a good run, but it's just been enough. Not at all. That is not my thoughts at all. What I am thinking is right now, at this valuation, at a price of around 156 62 cents, relative to the actual intrinsic value of this company, relative to actually how much growth is taking place within this equity, the profitability, the financial stability, the valuation relative to growth, everything in this company, not only those factors I've just mentioned, but also the long-term secular trends around this business, they scream long-term buying opportunity. They scream Chance to buy into a wonderful company at evidently a fair price. Warren Buffett has always said, buy companies when they're on the operating table. Buy companies when it appears as if they're about to die. And Meta, Meta for months on end now has appeared as if it's in a terrible position. Buy companies when they're in a terrible position. As long as the underlying fundamentals are solid. As long as the underlying reality of the company is of a high standard. And when it comes to Meta... That's exactly what you're seeing. That's exactly what you're buying. Financial stability that is simply outstanding. A cash to debt ratio of 3.12. The ability, if they so desired, to pay off all the debt obligations three times over. Not every company has that ability. Very few companies, in fact, have the ability to pay down all the debt obligations, let alone have excess cash on hand to reinvest and build out their company going forward. Everything is there. And it's complemented by those underlying financial stability statistics. Equity to assets of 0.75, debt to EBITDA of 0.11, debt to EBITDA or debt to equity of 0.11, debt to EBITDA of 0.27. All these numbers, they tell you the narrative of a very financially stable, very financially strong, very appealing long-term investment prospect. A company that should not be set aside as done or finished, but instead focused upon as the epitome, if not one of the strongest financially stable companies in the world. The Altman score tells you that same story. An Altman score of 8.97, indicating the tremendous degree of underlying stability and safety with this business. Evidently, based upon that Altman score, this is a very safe company. Not going away, not going away the next two, three, four, five years. This company is here to stay. And yes, you may say, well, that's not what the stock market's been saying. That's not what the stock market's been saying. The stock market's been saying, this company is done. This company's finished. We need to discount it massively. It's at severe risk. That is what the performance in the stock market's been telling you. Well, I may have news for you, and this may surprise you. This may be new news to you as a potentially new investor. But the stock market isn't always rational. The stock market isn't efficient, as the academics say. What the stock market is, largely, most of the time, is informed by emotions, informed by people's emotions in the marketplace, rather than the actual tangible value of the equity that's being traded on the securities exchange. That is the reality of Meta. That's the reality of what's been happening with this stock. Fear, the anxiety, these very human emotions have been informing the movement of the stock, rather than the actual tangible value of the business. Because when you look at it, and as I've shown you just then, with those underlying stability metrics... Evidently, the, the case is very different. There's a big differential between what we're seeing in terms of tangible stock market performance and what we're actually seeing in terms of the tangible value and performance of the underlying equity. That's the reality. That's the reality of the difference between stock market performance and actual business quality. But if you can use that discrepancy, if you can identify top quality companies whilst the market is discounting them, whilst the market is neglecting their underlying value, that provides a buying opportunity. 
that provides an undervaluation opportunity, a chance to buy what is evidently a wonderful company trading at an even more wonderful price. And that is exactly what we're seeing with Meta right now after this massive decline, now almost down 60% from its high. But it's not just financial stability. Financial stability isn't the only thing going for Meta. There is also underlying profitability. Let me show you this. Profitability with net margins of 31.2%. Extremely impressive. For every dollar of revenue that comes into their business, 31% of that is pure profit. And no, those net margins are not indicative of one-time gains on investment. They're not indicative of gains on investments made in other companies. What they're indicative of is purely operational performance, purely the quality of their underlying business. And that's reflected in the nature of their operating margins. Operating margins even higher at 36.68% and gross margins of 80.34%, all of which are simply outstanding. So phenomenally high profitability, outstanding financial stability and returns on equity. Returns on equity tell the story that so many people have been so hesitant to listen to over the past few months. Returns on equity of 28.57%, they tell the narrative of a competent management. People running this company not only with a long-term vision for the future in the metaverse, but also a focus on the present, a focus on ca allocating capital intelligently, buying back stock opportunistically when it's trading at a discount. That, that's the evident level of skill exuded by these numbers. The numbers don't lie. The numbers don't make up false narratives. The numbers don't make up speculative bets. What the numbers tell you is the reality of the business. And all these numbers, the financial stability metrics, the underlying profitability, the returns on equity, indicative of that quality management in place, tells you a very compelling story, especially when you take into account the current valuation. The current valuation, which by the way, is only a P-E ratio, based upon a P-E ratio, of 11.73. That's it. The lowest PE that this company has had historically ever. The lowest PE the company has ever had. And yet, look at the growth taking place. Look at the growth over the past three years. Three-year revenue growth of 29.2%. Three-year EBITDA growth of 24.1%. Year earnings per share growth of 22.1%. And three-year free cash flow growth of 37.1%. Five percent. Does that sound like the type of growth you'd associate with a company with a P.E. ratio of only 11.73? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I think there's a massive discrepancy between the growth being priced in on this company and the growth that's actually taking place. And that discrepancy, much like the discrepancy between the actual tangible value of a company and how the market is pricing it in, that discrepancy, it creates opportunity. Let me show you. And we break it down even more. On the day, after the most recent declines, bring the stock down to a 52-week low, all you need to price in at this low stock price is a tangible growth rate going forward over the next decade of around 3%. That's it. If Facebook can grow at 3% going forward over the next decade, 3% going forward over the next decade, discount rate of 9% current earnings per share figure of $13.22 a share, then you're getting fair value for your money. You're paying a fair value of $156.61 relative to that current trading price of $156.62. You're paying fair value. You're getting fair value for your money, even with an extremely low growth rate of 3% going forward over the next decade. Now think about it. Over the past 10 years, this company has grown earnings per share at 68.5%. Over the past five years alone, growth of 27.8%. Over the past one year alone, Growth of 13.1%. So there's evidently massive growth taking place from this equity. Massive growth not only in the past, but also in the present. So ask yourself, with the secular trends around Facebook, with the potential for forward-looking growth going forward, does a 3% growth rate really seem that reasonable? I don't think so. I think it's very, very conservative. In fact, I think it's irrational given the underlying quality of this business. So... What happens if we price in more growth? What happens if we get more rational going forward over the next decade? Let's say, for instance, a growth rate of 14%. Still very, very conservative relative to the 10-year and 5-year growth rates, but I think more reasonable given the potential for growth going forward. So let's say a growth rate of 14% going forward over the next decade, discount rate of 9% current earnings per share figure of $13.22 a share. Look at that fair value. Fair value of $300. And $31.95. Margin of safety of 52.82%. That 
That's the reality of this company. That's the reality of the opportunity evident within Facebook right now. Massive undervaluation in terms of pretty much every single metric you can possibly think of. That, that's what Facebook is right now, or Meta is right now. A massive, massive buying opportunity. But of course, investigate the business yourself first. Look into the company before you make any moves. But if you enjoyed this video, if you have to learn something more about my current thoughts on meta platforms relative to the market more broadly, then please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or topic you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.